Hello and good evening and welcome to my channel. Um, after this evening's hangout with uh, a couple of the guys, I've decided that I thought I'd have a go at doing a solo uh, musing, really, on Brexit. Now, I'm not sure what kind of uh, direction this will take, um, but I'm just going to vent my my own feelings uh, on Brexit as someone who voted um, and someone who has quite keenly um, observed what's happened since. Um, I know quite a few Americans um, and Australians as well who are quite will be quite interested to um, know what's going on. Um, so. I guess really um, I will start off by saying that I voted to leave and people have asked me why um, I decided to vote leave as I feel that uh, European control over our country is doing us no favours quite honestly and I've seen what's happening across Europe the influx of refugees across Europe and all these attacks from ISIS or ISIL, whatever you want to call them, Daesh, and how this massive influx of refugees has allowed uh, these terrorist organizations to plan attacks across Europe. And I feel that uh, the safety of this country, safety of the UK, is potentially at risk. That has nothing to do with us taking refugees in. I'm not xenophobic in the slightest. I am quite proud that we have accepted people from other countries who've come here to work and are integrated into our own country. What I don't like is the fact that someone from the far, far eastern stretch of Europe can come here and access the full services of the UK, whether that be health service, benefit service, and it's not fair. It should be what happens in the UK can happen in France, in Germany, in Spain, in Holland, Italy, but it's not. And something as simple, uh, I went to Gran Canaria in May and I belonged to a Facebook group um, and I saw that uh, somebody had hurt themselves quite badly, required stitches, um, and we were given a nice hefty bill for 500 quid or 500 euros. And they did everything they were told to do. They got an EHIC card, they got insurance. Thank God they got insurance. But the EHIC card only grants you treatment at the point of access so and and you have the same rights as a local well most of the countries in Europe don't have a national health service such as the UK where whereby your national insurance contributions allow you to access free treatment or very heavily highly subsidized treatment. So how is that fair? How is that fair for people who, who in the UK who are traveling in the EU? And likewise, you have people from the EU traveling into the UK using and accessing an already heavily pressurized health service that's even before we get into 
claiming benefits and all sorts. But anyway, I want to move away from that because it makes me look like I'm, I voted purely on that basis. I voted largely because the EU want to stake sovereign control over its member nations. And I think that's very, very dangerous. Since the war, I can see what's happened quite clearly that a handful of a cartel of very clever people of the elite have basically tried to quash German imperialism and German interest, German dominance over Europe. And instead now we've got this federal state or federal wanting to be. And I feel that we are better off out of that. We are better off out of Europe. We are better off deciding what we want to do in England, how we trade, how we allow access in and out of our country. And I know that there will be consequences, negative consequences for the UK. It will mean we have to renegotiate all our trade. It will mean that we won't have free access across EU. We'll have to apply for visas, etc. But we will have control of, over our own country and we will be able to dictate law. And I know that the courts of the European courts is, are a separate entity to the to the EU, so that's a different aspect. But it will be a start. It will be the start of British independence and British well, British interests. The return of British interests. I guess one thing that's really alarmed me about the Brexit vote, because it was so close, I was up all night watching it. And part of me regrets not being up that night sort of commenting, because commenting, I've forgotten a, you know, a fair bit of what went on. But I was really surprised at some of the some of the areas that voted to leave and some of the areas that voted to remain. The, I spoke to a lot of people. I did my homework. I did my research. I spoke to a lot of people candidly on how they were going to vote. I didn't try to influence anyone. I was merely trying to see which way people were going to vote. And I was so sure that, that we would, we would, win that the leave vote would would be successful it would have a very good majority but we were so close and i remember being up all night and thinking we're gonna we're gonna be remaining this is gonna be a remain vote and it got to about three or four o'clock in the morning and slowly the leave votes were coming in but it was very, very close. It was a very long and excite, exciting night, actually. But then, of course, it must, after all the voting happened, we had all the, all the media putting a spin on it and how awful it was going to be and how, how all the old people had ruined the hopes of the young and selfishly voted to leave. And I was just thinking, what a, what a load of rubbish. The young people, I don't really know anything. We only know what, what, we, what we have experienced or what we, what we actively seek to, to research. And there are people that are, you know, more enlightened than I um, and, and I myself probably more enlightened than other people who haven't done their research on the EU and what's going on in the world and you know the Brexit vote and 
I was really shocked at how everyone reacted. How people who told me to my face, oh yeah, yeah, I voted leave, I voted leave, had actually voted remain. And the hostility that that's being or was being and is being shown to people who've voted to leave. It's mad. It's absolutely mad. The, the country has been, is in, is in oh, potential turmoil, really. I'm not sure what is going to go on with regards to them triggering, trig, triggering the Article 50 um, and the consequences of that or what, what the PM is going to decide to do and how we can negotiate new trade deals, I really don't know. But one thing that really alarmed me, and I, even I as a Leave voter, I remember going to work, was it work? No, I remember talking to someone and this person told me they they're quite they're quite a, a lot significantly older than me. They told me you should never be afraid of how you vote, and I remember telling this person, "I feel like I'm a criminal. I feel like a Nazi. I've been made to feel like it's an awful thing." that I voted leave and it's the worst thing that I could have done. But in my deep down, I know it's the right thing and we will be better off for it. And I've watched videos on YouTube and on Facebook and on the news of these protests, the Remain voters at protest and how It's almost like they're protesting against the Nazis. I feel like a Nazi. I feel like people think that we're Nazis because we voted to leave. That we want to leave because we 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 want we don't want ethnic minorities in our country. We don't want foreigners in our country. It has nothing to do with that. That's a very very narrow-minded take on it. I must have spoke to a hundred people and asked them why have they why are they deciding to to leave to vote leave. One person one person mentioned anything on a slightly xenophobic ma manner and that when they when that person was talking to me they they were they were slightly racist but that was their viewpoint 99 people um, it wasn't precisely 100 but just to, to paint a point 99 people mentioned that they they just wanted controlled immigration they wanted control over the over their own country they didn't want to be dictated to by the eu there was lots of other, lots of other things people were raising, but one person mentioned anything. Even wasn't you know it was slightly racist, slightly xenophobic. That they were afraid that we were going to be you know they were going to have free reign into the UK and it was yeah on reflection it wasn't even racist. They weren't actually saying that they they didn't want foreigners, they didn't want a specific group of people in our country. They were just afraid that people foreign to this country were going to take their jobs and going to take their, you know, rob them, and pillage, pillage the country.
And I remember also somebody telling me that they'd had a conversation before the vote. And they were asked by someone how they were going to vote, to which they responded they were going to vote leave. And this person just outrightly attacked them and called them a complete moron. And they had no consideration, no idea what they were, what they were voting for. And I was so angry when, when this person told me this. And she, she laughed about it and she was like, oh yeah, yeah, it was just a joke. It was just a joke, we all laughed about it. But you don't say something without truly meaning it, whether it's a joke or not. There has to be some matter to it. There has to be some reason why it was said whether you're grinning or laughing behind it. I really hope, I just, I guess part of me would be really interested to see what would have happened had it been the other way around. Had we voted to remain, what would have happened? Would there have been nearly as much protest and angst as if we'd voted to leave? I don't know. I think there would have been, there would have been some. There would have been some trouble, but I don't think it would have been nearly the same. It's very troubling times, I, I really hope that whatever ideas they have with regards to, to triggering Article 50, that they just, they're transparent about it and that they, they, they consult people. It's all very cloak and dagger and we're not really sure what's going on and the media are putting a spin on things as they, as they do. And they're telling people that what what was promised by a point system of immigration of entry into the country is not even going to be on the table. It's not even being considered by the PM. So I'm not really sure what is. And that's the reason why a lot of people voted. People were voting because they wanted controlled immigration. They weren't saying, we don't want anyone in. They were saying, we want to know who's coming in and who's going out. We want to have quotas on how many doctors we need and how many hairdressers we need, how many bakers and builders and stonemasons we need, how many dentists we need. Because once you have that information, allows the country to know actually we're bringing in so many doctors and so many nurses well why don't we start investing in some of our own you need that information to be able to to invest in your own population the development of your population and you in the workforce of your population I just hope that they they really consider. My fear is is that they will just have they will just close the borders and it will be on a case by case basis, which I'm not sure will will work. It will that will truly make us look like a xenophobic nation, a little xenophobic island in the Atlantic. just um, just feel that oh, I don't know I don't know it's easy to sit here and say I wish they do this and I think they should do that 
but I guess I've just wanted to to vent, to put my feelings out there so that I can perhaps listen to them again a year or so down the line and think how wrong you were or how right you were. It's a bit like, you know, when you talk to someone and you convey an idea or you convey a feeling and how they then take a part of that with them. That's fine. That's good. But it's, it's a bit more than that. Sometimes you need an opportunity to just in, in uncertain times, certainly to just convey what you're feeling. It's like if you're stressed, if you're stressed, you should, you should just vent because often enough, um, just being able to vent will, will help you to offload. You might not be able to change anything about that situation, but it just helps you to offload and be rational and help you to put things into place. Anyway, I think we will be doing a couple more hangouts this week. I'd really like to get a couple of British guys, guys or girls, not being uh, misogynistic, um, to do a hangout. We can create some videos and we can uh, talk about Brexit it would be really interesting to get a couple of, uh, you know, people from both sides of the argument. Or even if you, even if you didn't vote, it would be interesting to have a couple of people like that. Perhaps you abstained or you just didn't want to vote. I know people that were like that and didn't that chose not to vote. They choose not to uh, be a part of that. But in my opinion, it was far more important than, than any election, any council election or MP election. This, is, this will have repercussions, positive and negative. And I really hope that uh, we, we make the most out of what we've been given now. We've got massive potential. If only we had unity and people working together, but we haven't got that. We've got the Labour Party at loggerheads. The Liberals, well, what's happened to them? The Tories, well, we've got a new PM. See what she's going to do. I don't think she'll do much. I really think that she's going to dupe us all. I think we're all going to be duped in what will seem amazing on the table and at face value will be very little for us. We'll still be in the EU. And we'll still be answerable to them. We'll still have to do what they tell us to do. And we'll still have to pay all that money. Whatever the figure is, you know, that was another thing that really annoyed me was the, you know, there was no clear accounting on how much we actually pay but the fact of the matter is why are we paying anything even if we get something back why are we paying money to be a part of the European club we shouldn't be paying anything anyway as I said, we'll do some more hangouts this week. Lots of different topics. Politics, history, philosophy. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we'll do this week. Anyway, take care, everyone. That's enough from me. And I'll uh, see you all soon.